Hey guys, it's a new Rebecca. So today I'm going to give my February wrap up as well mention a couple books I'm planning to read in March. So yeah, let's get started. So the first book I completed in February was a uh, carryover from January and it was The Atlas Complex by Livy Blake. This is the third and final novel in her Atlas trilogy. The first book being The Atlas Six. And I'm only gonna give the synopsis to the Atlas Six. And it's about these like six uh, magicians in the world where where magicians and like normal people kind of live like together, and the normal people know about the magicians. And these six magicians are supposed to be some of the most powerful magicians in the world, and they're invited to like this secret society to study and whatnot. And there's one uh, thing that the novel really told him that one of them must die and they must, they must be killed by like the other, so yeah. With this final book, there's not much plot going on. I would say it's mainly vibes, you know, Olivia Blake spewing a bunch of philosophical stuff about humans and whatnot. I actually made notes about this book, so let me pull out my notes. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah uh, there is this experiment that three of the characters are really involved with. I, that, the rest of the characters know it, but they are not like, involved or they don't want to be involved. And we don't really see that much plotting, like of how to conduct it or not. It's like them talking if they can or cannot do it, if they should or shouldn't do it, and yeah. And of course, all of these characters have a god complex. Like they believe they're the most powerful beings on earth, and they want to use that power they have to kind of change the world. Now. Yeah. Yeah, there is still a sacrifice that must be made because that wasn't, that wasn't, like that kind of happened, but not really, yeah. But yeah, it's like, they all think they're gods when they're not, like, they think they're bigger than life and then there are specks of sun in human history, so, yeah, I did like all of that philosophical stuff, and, and I can see why people might not like it, I when I rated this book initially, it was like a 3.12 on Goodreads, which I think is the lowest like rated book of this entire trilogy. And I just checked the other day and it was like a 3.08, which makes but you know, I still liked it. I guess I was in a new philosophical mood when I was reading it, so uh, yeah, I gave it a 4 stars. The next book I read in February, and if you saw that my a vlog I did about it recently, you'll know what book it is. <laughs> Um, I read Bunny by Mona Awan. This is about this girl named Samantha who is part of this creative writing program. It's almost like a master's program at this university. And she's part of this very small co cohort. And there's five girls in total. And four of the other girls are all part of a group. And she's kind of alone. Until one day they invite her along to this like smudge which from my gather it's like they kind of kind of is to try and get their creative juices flowing and whatnot and she kind of becomes part of their group. And yeah, it becomes really weird really fast. Like yeah, uh, it was like a roller coaster it felt like I was in a journey with her and I it felt like a fever dream at times, so yeah, fun. And I did enjoy this. I don't know what to say about this book without spoiling it because all of my notes on it are, I think are quite spoilery but yeah, let's go into it knowing that it can get quite weird and yeah I did like it, I gave it a 4 stars The next book I read and finished in February was A History of Fear by Luke Dumas This is about this guy who kills his friend and he claims the devil made him do it. The guy ends up 
and then comes up while he's in jail and he leaves this manuscript behind. And this journalist, she is given permission to publish his manuscript, so we're being told that, but it's also like the journalist's own research she's done, like she adds like interviews she's done with people in his life who knew him, and like the court transcript of what people were, of what the witnesses were saying in court during his trial as well. The notes his uh, colleges and prison like left behind. So yeah, this was interesting, and I felt sorry for him because all he wanted to do was to make his father proud, and he wasn't able to. Like it seems like there was some sort of generational curse when his father like something happened in Edinburgh where the story takes place to make him leave, and it seems like that curse was passed on to his son. So. I did like the ending where the journalist, like, she tries to, to create a reasonable explanation for what happened, happened, like, she, it's, like, the devil made him do it, it's, like, it can be seen as, like, the way he's telling the story as well can be seen, like, mental illness or something, which, that is a problem a uh, reasonable explanation, but there are some things that you c that she cannot explain at all. But, so yeah, I did like this a lot. And I did give it a four stars as well. And the next book I read in February is Masters of Death by Lizzie Blake. This is about this vampire who's trying to sell his house, but the last occupant of the house, he was killed in it. And he doesn't seem to know like what exactly happened. He he doesn't seem to remember how he was killed, and he cannot move on. So he is haunting that house, sabotaging her like during open houses while people are trying to see about like buying it. And yeah, so she gets this like I think it's a medium who happens to be the godson of death, and this guy is a fraud. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> all I can really say about it and for me this was fine I did end up giving it the three stars my main issue was that I just didn't really feel connected to the characters like there was a relationship in here that I liked but I just didn't really care about it like I just didn't care about the characters didn't really care about the story and sometimes things did feel rushed like I wish we had more time to really explain the relationships between us See if, see if that developed more. But yeah, I I don't know. It was fine. So yeah. And the uh, final book I finished in February was *The Clockmaker's Daughter* by Kate Morton. This is about a summer in 1862 when a bunch of why young artists go to this manor in the English countryside to paint and just really create art until so, um, something tragic happens that leads to death and in art is like not his downfall but he kind of like recluses himself, kind of keeps out of the public eye, like he does a lot, he uses his own motivation, he uses his own hope. He kind of falls apart. And then a hundred and fifty years later, a woman in ar archivist, I believe that's how you say it, I don't know. But she discovers this old, um, what is it called? She uncovers a sad show that contains this photograph and this sketchbook and She's kind of like feels almost protective of the statue and does stuff in it, and she doesn't know why. So. And <laughs> this book really is just like a bunch of stories that are connected, and they're connected to this house because each of these stories um, happen at the house during different time periods between. That summer in 1862 to present day, and as well, they're all 
connected to the stone, this like blue Wycliffe blue stone. So yeah, there's that. And um, <laughs> this just didn't really work for me. I just didn't really care for the stories. I didn't understand why we were being told them until the very end when I saw the, that connection that we're all connected to the earth. I guess in a way that our stories will live on in some way to the earth. So yeah, and, but yeah, honestly, this was like a sweet story. Look, it's fine. It's not something I'm gonna think about personally. I just, again, it just didn't really work for me. I, I cannot put my finger on it. I just, I think I was expecting one thing and I got something else. So yeah. But that is all I read in February, and for my March TBR so far, I am planning to read The Axis Serpent by Sarah Perry. This is about a woman whose husband dies, and she leaves London to go to Essex, where she hears about this tale of this, like, serpent, and she kind of, like, it's like a myth, and she kind of investigates it so yeah I'm in pain and and after that I'm planning to read The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin which seems like it's about these four kids who discovered their fortune and yeah they you know, they're told their fortune and it seems like it will take them to the next five decades of their life when we see how their fortunes kind of come into fruition. So yeah, this one just sounds intriguing to me. So I'm interested. But yeah, that is all I read in February and what I'm planning to read in March so far. Well that was all read in March will of course be in my March wrap up. But yeah. That's it for this video, so if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below telling me what you've been reading recently. If you want to, please subscribe to this channel, and if you want to follow me on any social media, then all those links are in the down bar below. I'll see you guys next time I post a video.